there is a lot of controversy on it. Most of it is we don't want it in our backyard, which is always been with every case. You can come up with all the reasons why not to have it in an area because of uh, wildlife, birds, uh, signals, so on and so forth. Is that thunder? Yes. <laughs> wow. He's not coming in on us here. Uh, but anyways, if I'm not mistaken, is there a lot, this, this is something that's been bugging me a little bit, that you have a right to put a tower in a location where it's needed? State Cor law? Or, correct. Or, or FGC law, I should say. Correct. Am I uh, right? Yes, that, that's correct. That's <coughs> what is described in Exhibit C. I have that, yes. Yes, which are the applicable legal standards. Yes. Um, basically, the way that the, the law works in New York State is that uh, telecommunications companies are given the same uh, discretion with respect to siting of telecommunications sites as any other utility would. So, you know, RG&E substation, uh, a sewage treatment plant, um, we well, yeah, have water, uh, water treatment and, and distribution facilities. The reason being that, like other utilities that are essential, and telecommunications services is now deemed essential um, in, in our modern world. Uh, they have to be cited in, in certain areas in order to, to work. Um, obviously, if, if the company could suffice with never putting one more dollar into infrastructure and never having to build another tower or putting up another antenna, that's of course what they would do. Um, but they're not able to render the adequate service that's demanded of not only their FCC license but their customers without uh, increasing coverage and, and providing uh, coverage in existing gaps. So similar to other utilities where you need to be located next to um, sources or receptors, that's no different with, with telecom. That, you know, the, you, in, as much as a, an area that's far away that nobody ever frequents, that no one can ever see, feels like it's a better <coughs> location, uh, you're not going to be getting the, the coverage that's necessary in, in those types of spots. So there is deference and discretion given under New York State law for citing of telecommunications facilities similar to other utilities, that if we can, as a company, show that there's a need, and, and you show that need uh, by the gap in coverage, which we've displayed with our propagations, we see the big white spot along Lake Road where there is no coverage and there's very spotty coverage, um, and that we've done our diligence to show that within that search area, that area of need, that this is a reasonable uh, location, um, which we believe it is based on the analysis that we provided of the other available sites, that again, will serve this need, not just any other site in the town or in the neighboring town or, or somewhere else where folks may think that um, a tower is going to be less visible or more desirable, but if we can meet that burden, then yes, New York State law uh, provides that we're then entitled to, to, the, to the site. Can the, can the FCC override, for example, if the community decides uh, they don't want the tower? Uh, can the FCC, does the FCC have the authority to circumvent and uh, change that and say, yes, you do, you must build the tower at a certain location? Yes, so it's not the FCC per se that has that power, it would be the New York State courts um, that would say, based on the FCC's jurisdiction and based on the fact that you have met the legal burden that I just described, um, if, if a municipality were to say, the resident, you know, sorry, telecom company, just as they could say theoretically, sorry, water company, sorry, sewer company, sorry, electric company, the residents don't want you here, um, that would not withstand uh, in, in a legal challenge if we've met our legal burden to show that there's a need for the service and, and that this is an appropriate location. So it wouldn't be the FCC that, that would trump it, it would be it would be New York State law, um, which has put in into effect this relaxed domain standard for public utilities, including telecommunications providers. That's and, and as you know, New York State has certain areas that, that preempt or overarch local municipal control. Um, and, and so that, that would be not the FCC, but, but New York State. Okay. Um, anybody have any questions? Okay, I know there's folks here that are opposed to the project. Um, this, this is just a sketch plan review. It is not a public hearing. 
did watch Town Board. I was a little disappointed the way the actions were going on in there. Uh, I'll say it right out. Then it won't happen here tonight. If you want to speak, we will give you an opportunity to speak. One person goes up and speaks. The podium up there. Please don't burst out. If that's going to happen, I'm going to ask you to leave the room. I'll tell you right now, this, this was very frustrating watching that meeting the other night. People interfering with other people speaking and so on. It's not acceptable. So, that said, if uh, anyone who does wish to comment on this, don't want to hear stories, war stories, and this and that. It's whether or not it is an acceptable use in that area. I see your sign, but uh, want to bring up any comments? You're welcome to come up. Just, just give us your just give us your name and address. Sir. And if you don't mind, I'll just wait. Over sure, that's fine. Right. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Andy Oakhart, a uh, longtime resident, 820 Lake Road. So, uh, uh, I don't think this is really so much you know, the so-called NIMBY thing. I, I don't think we want to stand in the way of progress. I think the issue at hand is the specific siting within the coverage area that Verizon is attempting uh, to build. So, it's a large area, uh, and I think Verizon from my readings of their submission, did not necessarily do a lot of diligent uh, pursuit of alternative sites. They cited the Kiwanis location, and it's not even clear really why they rejected it. It's just half a mile away from this proposed location. They mentioned the Whiting Road location. Uh, they said, well, we sent letters to the landlord, uh, or the owner of the property, didn't get a response, so we just dropped it. So I don't really see a lot of uh, uh, looking around at alternate sites. This is directly on Lake Road, Lake Road, which is a New York State designated official scenic byway. Um, if you look at the pictures of the tower, this thing is a giant. It stands two to three times higher than the tree line. It will stick out like a giant sore thumb on a New York State scenic byway. Uh, that's not a good thing. It's, it really detracts from the entire purpose of the state legislation to protect and preserve the natural scenic beauty of that route. So again, I'd submit Verizon uh, needs to look around a little bit harder. We're not necessarily disputing that, hey, if they improve coverage in that area would be nice. Sure, okay, I accept that. I think it's a very big block of land, though, and I don't think they've really done any sort of uh, proper diligence in, in seeking out alternate sites. I think the board, the town, and the planning board have to balance balance the interests of everyone involved. Balance the desire for improved cell service and balance the potential uh, uh, degradation of the natural beauty of that route and of the area and the significant impact uh, on, the, on all the property values in that area. We're talking a, a diminution of millions of dollars, perhaps, of uh, property value because of this big, and I'm sorry, big, giant, ugly tower. Is it, do you have fact to that? Or is Excuse that, me? Is that, is, do we have some information that shows that? Or is is it the uh, diminution of property value? Yeah. That I, I intend to get that. I just cursory looking through, there's all sorts of studies that talk about it. It's a wide range. 10%, 20%, it really depends on the, I guess, the garishness and the height of the tower and, and the property's proximity to the tower. But I do intend to, to gather that. I may even get some real estate experts to uh, uh, opine and, and offer a, an assessment of the detraction of value from such a tower. <coughs> so I would ask them, please go back to the drawing boards, look at the, look a little closer. I think there are alternate sites that they can cite this that will not be such right on the main route, right on Lake Road, maybe a little further back, maybe a little down Whiting. See, so that's where the trouble comes in. That's what I was, I, I, I hear what you're saying. Sure. But further back, you know, further back, you just go back another quarter of a mile and you're at the Kiwanis, there's a tower right there, in that area, just below the tower. I mean, just, just beyond the Kiwanis. Well, we're, ta we're talking half a mile. That's a long, from what I understand, that's a long range on a cell tower. They transmit a small radius, 
So I think that's, uh, this is just from past experience with other localities that you've been in. Well, this, this tower is meant, supposedly meant to cover from Baker Road over to Holt Road and a mile down south. So I, it's, it's sighted pretty far north, in my opinion, and within that range. Uh, See, ideally, it would be nice to set something like that. In a, we've done these before. Been through every town that's been in town. And there was one we proposed, I'll just backtrack a little bit. It was proposed on Bay Road. It was right by the curve of the road, right by the corners. <coughs> And if you were going south, you would see that tower right in front of you because it was right by the curb. If you were going north, same thing. You had the curb, that tower. So we asked if it could be moved. They messed around it, worked it over, worked it over, flew balloons and everything. Ultimately, you located it back onto the uh, Kiwanis property, you know, further back in the trees. It kind of hit it more, but it's still there. It still sticks up. But do you see it? Not really. You've got to be looking for it, you know? And this year is pushed way back. Granted, there's no trees. I wish there were, but this this tower, you're not going to miss it. You're going to see it. I agree. I understand 100% what you're saying. I agree with you. But there are no trees there. But you can't put it back any further. You're into the parkland. If you did go back, then what do you do? You got to have access. You got to put a road. We need to put a road through all that. That's all wetland down in there. I mean, it's it's not a proper spot for it there either. You'd have to make a road going through the woods. So this doesn't interfere with any ecology whatsoever. It's just a continuation from where the barn is back to that tower site. See, that's, that's the way I'm seeing it, and I, I understand what you're saying. Again, I, we're, we're, I don't think we're necessarily disputing that somewhere within that block a tower can be sighted. I think this is probably the worst, one of the worst possible choices, again, right on the premier road of the town of Webster, Lake Road. But it's not on the road, it's, it's how far? How it's a quarter mile, not even. Less than a quarter mile. No, far, how far back from the road is it? 800 feet roughly, I think. I, I don't know. I have to get it. 800 or 900 feet of property. It's less than a quarter mile. It's, it's as far back as you can get. Which is pretty going. significant for our sighting. What is it? That's pretty significant. No, absolutely. For our sighting. Yeah, I can see that. I, I guess I don't understand why they, they did uh, supposedly explore, explore the Kiwana site, and I could not uh, deduce the reason why that was uh, summarily rejected. I'm going to guess, so they can respond if they have the answer, but my guess is that it's too close to the tower that's at Drum Road there, by the Nullstack. There's a tower right there. I, I don't suppose they would have investigated it from the get go had that been the case, though. I don't know. Maybe they wouldn't look for a tour. Oh, yeah, sure we do. Same as the existing crown tower. They What's see. that? Sure, we would investigate it even if it ends up being too close, just like we did with the existing crown tower. We, we hope um, that that lots of, we hope to have lots of options within a search ring, and so we investigate it. You're going to talk and you talk to my microphone. Yeah, we invest, well, I, I can wait and just do a, a summary rather than the back and forth. All right, I guess we got the picture where you. So again, the Whiting Road, I, they, we sent two letters to the property owner, didn't get a response, oh, done with that. So again, that would be at the Wayne Road locations, where it would be, again, off, a little bit off of Lake Road, a little more in a sheltered area, or potentially other locations. I mean, this is labeled the Webster Park Tower. I don't know if there's any Webster Park locations that might also be suitable. Okay, all right, well, let's, let's move on from that one, then we'll consider it. Thank you. All right, yes, ma'am. I have um, some more comments to add to the mic. to the mic. I'd like to stay Great. not repeating everything, the same things over and over. And let's try and keep it down to five minutes if possible. Okay. Um, I live at 846 Lake Road. We are um, right across the street from it. Yes, we oppose it. Which, which you would ask. Can you get your name, please? Murray McCutcheon, I'm sorry. Um, you had asked if we had any documentation, and I had put together some um, a letter with some exhibits that I would love to pass out to the board. I have copies for all of you to look into that goes into a little bit of our concerns as well as touches base on the tower itself. 
5G, I imagine that they're going to be coming out with 5G. There's also a lot of potential risks that are being, we believe, undervalued and understated and not being looked into that we're also concerned about the risks of having a cell tower that close in our proximity. Let me just go to inter just for a second. Of oh, EMR. I did hear that comment um, earlier this week about the 5G signal, <clears throat> which did concern me a little bit. And I did call the uh, people, uh, the applicants, and asked, is this 5G or what? And they said, no, we don't use 5G. It's really the same as every other tower. It's 4G. So it isn't 5G signal then. 4G, 5G, can they guarantee us that these emissions over long term, and again, I want to refer you to the exhibits I do have in here. I'm just stating that EMR radiation emissions, they really do not know if it's harmful to people, animals, or whatever, wildlife. There's enough evidence through the years that suggests we may need to take a second look. We are concerned about that because so they take a second look at, at cell towers, new at, cell at, towers? at the type of resources and you information that's out there out. that determines what kind of effect does long term prolonged close proximity have upon people, animals, and wildlife to EMR radiation emissions. So um, again, you want this brief, I'm going to keep it brief tonight. I understand this is just a preliminary. The other concern, of course, is our area is considered an environmental protection overlay district, the parks, the conservation areas. So we also don't want a tower there that may also affect um, the wildlife our normal day-to-day, -day, what we expect is people who are coming in, tourists, people who are using, it's just not something that we think is a viable site. I think it's a good May I? I'm going sure, to absolutely. Okay. I'd love to have this one. Again, we have to get my packet. So yeah, she had it. That's good. Thank I gave Josh my copy. Okay. Again, we're just asking that perhaps we can um, hold off on this decision and maybe we can find an alternate site that would be more appropriate than the one that you want to put at 233 Lake. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, is there anyone else wishing to speak? This is I'm John Ernst, 1080 Road. Uh, I speak for the project primarily. Well, I was born in West Webster 84 years ago, so I've been around this town for a long time. But currently, I carry six coronary stents, which have kept me going for a while. And the cell phone coverage where I am at 1080 is terrible. I carry a cell phone because I can use it when I get inland, but half the time at 1080 it doesn't work. Part of the time it sends me to Canada, so I think we need this time. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Um, <clears throat> I did get a couple of comments from people in regard to this also. strong cell service. For this reason, I am not opposed to the project. I'd be interested in seeing any information the town has in regards to any health concerns as it relates to cell towers. Yes, I am not that informed about it. I am fine with you sharing my email. And 
received this one. I want to make you aware of my adamant support of the cell tower proposal across the street from my prior residence. He's moved to just down the street from there a little bit. Um, sold my home to some new Webster residents. And I'm happy to say that I remain local. <coughs> Excuse me. I remain local. I moved just a couple of doors down the street uh, to my new location. And my only complaint is the cell coverage. As you may or may not know, cell coverage in the area surrounding both properties is spotty at best. As you know, I'm a local resident, a significant supporter of this beautiful community we call home. I've lived on Lake Road for more than a decade. Uh, the cell reception is laughable. I consistently have three to six drop calls per day. I've had two emergencies occur in the past where I was not able to dial, to dial out due to lack of cell service. Uh, we literally get hit fees from Canada, occasionally for international fees that they can, when they can. And the lack of data service with consistent internet is very important. Living in Webster, this is pretty remarkable. I can't think of a single reason this cell tower should not be approved by the planning community immediately. Uh, I'm happy to jump on a call to provide any further clarifications. That was it. Like, so these are people who are in support of it. So you want to, so there's three people that are. And, you know, I think there's a whole lot of people that are in favor of supporting it. But the issue, and I know what you're saying, and I, I think it all boils down to you both are talking the same thing. It, it's mostly aesthetics. It's there. If it wasn't visible, we'd be okay with it. If it was, two, if it was 10 feet high, we'd be okay. But because you can see it. And right. most of these towers, over all the years, that have come into town, we've got several of them in Webster, uh, they kind of meld into the situation after a while. You don't even see them anymore. And we've got several of them like that. And they're, they're, this is no different than other ones that we've worked with, too, where people were dead against it, opposed it, fought it, and, you know, the reality is uh, everybody wants to use a cell phone. Right. That's um, the bottom line. I, I think that you hit it right on on the aesthetics, I, and, and I understand and appreciate you know, the, the comments from from the neighbors, and, and those are all comments we've heard before many times um, everywhere we go. So it's not surprising. I think though, you know, the, the comments about property values or concerns about wildlife or, or emissions, wherever a site is going to be located those same comments you know can rise so I, I really think it, it, it does come down to that folks don't want to see it um, right because moving it down the road um, in somebody else's neighborhood doesn't doesn't change any of the other comments um, that, that were raised um, I, I also want to make a, a point um, which which I, I don't think that I can overstate and that the law is very clear that when considering uh, telecommunications or other utility application, general community opposition of you know not wanting the project, not liking it, don't, not wanting to see it, is, is not an, an appropriate basis of, of consideration. So while we understand and, and respect that you know folks may not uh, love the idea of, of looking at a tower, I think that uh, like with any utility infrastructure, uh, you know, nobody loves telephone poles or wires or transmission lines or distribution lines, but it, it's just part of our, our reality. And, and like you said, Mr. <coughs> it, 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 they really do blend um, into uh, the canvas more than more than you think. You know, looking at that picture right now, it may seem a little scary. Um, that you know, you're you're going to theoretically, I guess, if you pull over on the side of Lake Road, be staring at that tower. Um, but I, I think it, you know, it just when I started doing this work 12 years ago, I started noticing towers that I never noticed ever before because I was looking for them. And I think you'd be shocked even if you paid attention from you know here to even your drive home, and you were really looking around, uh, what you would see that you don't typically otherwise notice. Um, uh, the point on the property values. You know, you're going to be able to find anything on the internet. Um, that's the, the beauty and the horror of the internet. Uh, but that's <coughs> also been vetted and litigated in New York State. And there's been no determination that these sites bring down anybody's property value. In fact, what we find, uh, similar to some of the comments we heard in, in writing from the gentleman tonight, 
is that in, in modern society, folks don't want to buy a house where there's no cell coverage because people don't have landlines and they work from home and they have teenagers and they want to be able to have reliable cell service within their homes. Um, so if anything, we see the availability of cell coverage as a benefit to property values, not, not a detriment. And again, we've, we've never seen a, a study that's been supported under any case where they've said that yes, these home values have come down because there's a cell tower you know, a mile and a half down the road. Um, on the, the site selection analysis, we did what we feel is, is a very thorough look. Um, again, we have a coverage area that looks somewhat large, but when, it, when you boil it down to all of the uh, topographic and, and other considerations where a site can actually be placed, where you're going to meet your coverage needs and you have a willing landowner, and if, you know we can't, we don't have the power of condemnation where we can tell somebody well, we found the perfect site and it's your backyard and this is where we're putting a tower. If folks don't want to entertain uh, a conversation with us, they don't have to, and, and we need to move on to fulfill our coverage needs, and, and that's what we do. Um, so, so we think that we have fully vetted all of the available opportunities. We think that this is a good site. We think that it's set back. We think that it's you know in an area that that's most appropriate. Uh, the last point, just on the emissions, uh, you know, possible emissions and concerns about wildlife and, and, and other, um, you know, and, and people and other issues with potential cell tower emissions, that's another issue that uh, the federal government has determined is not appropriate for local municipalities to have to weigh and consider. I'm sure you've heard this before with all the cell tower work that you've done, um, but going back to the FCC question, this one is actually federally preempted where the FCC has said, if a telecommunications tower is acting within its license limits, which we are, we have to be, um, or we have an issue with the federal government, that that's not even something, the, the, the idea of potential uh, you know, of issues with emissions from the tower is not something that a local municipality is even uh, allowed to consider. That's preempted and trumped by the federal government, and the reason being, because local municipalities are not in a position to weigh or, or to examine that type of analysis. So the federal government has done that for you and, and said here are the appropriate emission levels that a cell tower may operate within to be safe um, to you know humans and flora and fauna and, and the environment generally and we are going to be operating within those limits. We have to, we have no choice. Um, so again, that's not an, an appropriate consideration um, for, for local municipality to understand why folks might be concerned about that, but you know, rest assured that that's something that is highly regulated by the United States government and something that this company um, has to, along with all other cell providers, uh, adhere to in order to continue operating. I'm glad you got back to the point that I was making. Uh, a question that I have for you. Who goes out and tests this tower to make sure that the radiation levels are within Strict parameters. It's it's really the ability of the equipment can only operate within certain parameters, and, and I don't know if you want a little sure. bit more detail on that, Mike. But it's, it's mostly the ability of the equipment um, that only allows it to operate within those federally um, mandated parameters. So I'll start with introducing myself. My name is Mike Crosby. I'm uh, so Mike Crosby. Crosby. Uh, class of 1990, Webster High. <laughs> so is, I see a lot of familiar faces. So Mike's our um, hometown here. Yeah, so we'll hometown. Here. So um, grew up in Webster, moved away from Webster, moved back to Webster. So if that tells you anything, what I think about Webster, it's uh, in fact my claim to fame is in Boy Scouts. I put the uh, welcome to Webster word, like the word living signs on. It was Bay Road, Five Mile, 250. You know, so I've uh, been around here for quite a long time. I know those signs are looking pretty sad today, but they've been up for quite a long time. So, um, With that being said, um, I'll talk about a couple things. So as far as uh, the regulations are concerned, the OET, the FCC in 1996 created something called OET uh, Bolton 65B, which regulates the RF health, health and safety. So we're required to provide evidence that we have um, fulfilled uh, that need in the sense that the site is safe to operate, and in this case we're less than 1% of the maximum permissible exposure level. Once that's done, we're categorically excluded from further review. So that's the that's what's being talked about as far as the FCC providing that avenue forward to try to simplify things because this is something that as long as I've been in this business and I've been doing this for more than 26 years, 
that question has been around since I started. And in 96, when they came out with that bulletin, it helped to clarify things because we actually had formulas that we could actually calculate what that uh, maximum permissible exposure level would be. So we utilized third parties to calculate that. We, utilized, we calculated ourselves. Uh, as mentioned, the system, the system is actually regulated so that you can put in the max power and it can't go beyond that. So it's not something that's a typical concern once the site's concerned. Um, as long as I'm up, I'll talk about two of, two of the items that came up in the questions that I thought were uh, of interest from an RF standpoint. The first is the site and location. Um, you know, as mentioned, that uh, Kiwanis Club and an existing crown tower that's located down there near Van Alstein, um, that's about one mile away from our existing club road site. It's also about one mile away from the location that we're proposing uh, the Mount Webster Park project. Um, so it's situated halfway between where we need to be and where we already have existing sites. And so if you think about the town of Webster like a room, think of it as a dark room with people reading all throughout town. They're trying to read a book. And each cell site is like a light that tries to that provides coverage or provides light for you to be able to read your book. Right now along Lake Road, we have a gap in service where there's no reading light. And so if we provide more reading light from a location where we already have reading light, it doesn't help us to fix that problem. So I'm just trying to draw a common analogy to try to shed some light on why this specific location is needed. And speaking of that, one of the things that we're trained to do over the years is we've, we've had it beaten into us across hundreds of towns across New York State that I work with. We've had it beaten into us that we need to provide the improved service with the minimal impact of the community possible. That's exactly what this site is. By having this site strategically located close to Lake Road, it allows us to minimize the height of the tower. If it was located elsewhere within that search ring, the height of the tower might be significantly taller. It might require FAA marking and lighting. You know, so I think you know, we need to take into consideration that this is the minimum impact possible in order to solve the problem in this area. And that's due to the strategic position. And at 125 foot tip of the tower, that's a very modest tower. In fact, the last tower that I did in the town of Webster was back in the 90s. I've been, I've been all over New York State and Pennsylvania since then, but this is nice to be back in Webster. The last one I did was uh, working with Lieutenant Jerry Kohlmeyer. Uh, we replaced the tower at the town hall. And I remember at that meeting, he mentioned to some people that had spoken out against that height we were looking for a 120 at the time. And he said, you know, a lot of people don't even realize, you know, at, uh, I guess it's Fun Road and Old Road, the church tower that there was 170 feet tall. So the 120 that we were looking for at the town hall was minimal compared to other towers that exist in town. And the response was people said they didn't even know there was a tower there. And so that's kind of the point here is that this is a modest tower. And once it's there, it's really, with those trees being 80, 90 feet tall, the majority of that tower is going to blend in the background. Yeah, I can sure. see if the tower was closer to the road, you would be somewhat objectionable because it's all over there. And, you know, being located back there, <coughs> in my thinking, anyways, it's, it's about as good as you can get. <coughs> but I'm thinking, I did get a note from somebody. Uh, this is from the Friends of Webster Trails. Yes. And they're requesting, have you seen this? Is this uh, anyways, but they're, they're, they've got a good point. The site is located between and adjacent to our two premier open space properties, Whiting Road Nature Preserve and the Gosnell Big Woods Preserve. The mitigation of the tower impact on these natural areas, um, they are proposing that the owner grant to the town a conservation or a trail easement to connect the two pieces, so just, which is, I think is a good point. There's a good little negotiating thing there, too. Yeah, I mean, so that would have to be the owners of the property, obviously. Right, uh, yeah, and unfortunately that's obviously not something that, that we can require that mm -hmm. the owner grant a conservation easement that's giving up a, a real property right. Um, I would also, you know, d defer to your, your counsel on that, but that's, um, it, it's, it's, it's a bit unrelated to... I understand yeah, that. Yeah, no, I'm just, I don't know if you talk to the owners, or, but I can, we'll, we'll deal with that as a separate issue, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's, and, and I think, I think the inquiry point. is fine, but yeah, in the context of a site plan approval mm -hmm. to require um, the granting of a real estate interest is mm -hmm. a little bit outside the scope. But I, but I, under, I understand the point, and also just why you brought up the park. 
we call the Webster Park site um, for a reason, and that's that we're providing uh, one of the primary coverage areas in addition to uh, Lake Road, which is a, you know a significant target, is um, that trail system within within the park. And right. I know that that's something that's important to a lot the of trails, folks. The trails, the campground, you know, obviously Lake Road. Lake Road has a lot of ups and downs, as we all know, and twists and turns. And so, in order to provide that coverage with that minimal impact, that strategic location allows us to do that without having to have a taller tower. So. I think that we're lucky to have this large parcel available to us yeah. in this area of need because I can assure you, everywhere that I go for work, this is not always the case. So from my perspective, this is we're very lucky to have this large parcel available. Other than there, I've, I've been trying, I know the area pretty well. I've been here my whole life. Uh, I can't think of where you could put it without either going into town property, which would be big woods, uh, which you need to put a road in there, Try and get in there, um, you know, just across the street basically from the west. Mm -hmm. Or in the back is it, it's all down, it drops right off at the end of that tower. I think you've got it as far back as you could possibly uh, put it to be within the fall distance, 100 foot. You're that close to the drop off. That goes down, I'm going to guess it's going to pull about like 20 feet or something. Maybe you drop off yeah. back there, so you, you, know, you, can't, you can't put it down there if you're in a hole. So, with that said, I guess I, I don't see where we can do anything different with this at this point. Yes, sir. John? Just a very quick comment that occurred to me. Mm -hmm. uh, I think all of us live on Lake Road to look at the lake, not in Lake. Oh, thanks, John. Good point. All right. Is there anyone else wishing to comment on this? If not, what we'll do is, and again, there's, there's no vote tonight. This is just a, a review by, you know, our first shot at it, too. So with that, thank you for cooperating with us on this whole thing. Um, Can I pose a question to the end? Yeah, sure. The question is, uh, this gentleman who just uh, spoke talked about uh, health problems that he's uh, passed and that he's had dropped uh, signal services trying to call out. Has there been any studies done or anything to determine how many people would be uh, affected if this tower went up? In other words, instead of going through what this gentleman is going through, that he wouldn't have to worry about drop services anymore? I think it's it's less a, a calculation of number of people versus the an area that, that we can show, right, on the, the propagations that yeah, we, where, the, where the coverage would not be solid. If that's been calculated, I don't have that information with me, but roughly you're talking about a little over a mile, cell radius, and yeah. you're looking at the east, west, and south coverages. Um, and you know, for the record, I did just pick this site up from another engineer who's since moved on to one of our planning groups. So that's the reason why I haven't been involved in this particular site since the beginning. I just became involved as this uh, zoning came up for us. So I don't know if that's been calculated before, but I would say you're certainly talking about hundreds of people. Um, you know, and if you think about, you know, Verizon has roughly 50% of the market penetration in the area, you could say, you know, roughly 5 out of 10 people in the area are going to be immediately impacted with improved service. And speaking of health conditions, um, you know, one of the things we come across is an increasing concern, especially for baby boomers and, and other elderly folks that are, um, no offense to any baby boomers, you know, I apologize, my parents are baby boomers. No. My, my, mom, my mom's a baby boomer, so, um, so, you know, one of the things that's becoming increasingly important for folks in that age group is EMS. There's a lot of uh, medical services that are now provided, medicine, uh, dosages, and different things that we're finding, and even like hospice type cares that are done at home now, that areas like this would not be available. Uh, so it's actually something that we're hearing more and more from different types of medical communities. And of course, we used to hear that you know, obviously the ability to call 911, you know, that was your core need. Uh, you know, and obviously a lot of people having disconnected or cut the cord or don't have the landlines anymore, that's obviously very important still. Um, but there's a lot of increasing applications, especially as the technology becomes more capable. So the police department, for example, or the fire department, or EMTs came to you and said, we want to put a 
an additional antenna on top of this tower. Can you allow it? Yes, that's part so of I, the... I don't speak for Blue Sky, the tower company, so I'll defer. Yes, that's part of the co-location policy, yeah. um, which is right at Exhibit J. So just like we always seek to put antennas on an existing tower, if at all possible, to meet our coverage needs, we welcome you know being approached by other carriers and service providers if our tower meets their coverage needs uh, rather than construction of a new tower. So we move for everyone um, that they're able to, to co-locate uh, on an existing facility. So obviously, it has to. You know, the height has to make sense. Um, there can't be interference issues, but generally, as a policy, that the company is, is open and, and permitting. I believe that we have that in the code too. That any towers need to allow co location. Yeah, and most towers that you see, you see, you know, a couple of sets of antennas, and, and that's the reason that there are several providers generally. Um, and you mentioned other carriers. Are you also talking about your competition as well? That can happen sometimes too. Yeah, depending on the tower where, where there could be several competing carriers on the same tower, depending on the scenario. Okay. Just a question. Just a positive couple of questions to the Verizon folks. Sure. Thank you. In your part again. Uh, I'm not so sure uh, I agree with the uh, you'll learn to love it uh, sentiment. I, I'm not persuaded by that. But a couple questions uh, for the Verizon folks. Were this, were this specific site not to be allowed or permitted? My question is what would their second and third alternate best locations be? If for some reason they just could not locate there, I'm curious as to what. Uh, number two and three alternatives would be from their perspective. Uh, I also had a question. Uh, Mr. Crosby cited, uh, said, well, we want to improve the coverage on the Webster Park trails. So I guess would potentially not the converse be true that if the tower is sited in the Webster Park area, park proper, wide open areas there, easy access, um, presumably, likewise, it would provide coverage back the other way. If it can provide coverage forward, I presume it would provide coverage back. So just a couple quick questions here. Sure. Thanks. Yes. And I'm, I'm happy to address those and, and Mike can give details as needed. The, the, I'll answer your second point first, which is putting a tower right in the park. Um, that is a, a non-starter. Uh, it, it's very difficult, not impossible, um, to place uh, cell towers within park property. As the state of New York requires there to be an alienation of park property. You have to go through the New York State Legislature. It's deemed a grant of a property interest of protected land. Um, so that's that's not uh, really a, a viable option, um, just from a, a legal perspective, but from a coverage perspective, uh, you know, the, the further you get from Lake Road, obviously, you're, you're talking about having to find the perfect site, and it's probably going to get taller the further it has to be away. So for a lot of reasons, being within the park um, doesn't make sense. The, the point on what if this site doesn't work, there's no plan B at this point because none of the other sites that were vetted are acceptable um, from either a coverage perspective or um, you know being able to, to reach any sort of agreement. Uh, we are not able, as a company, to just uh, you know construct something that's not meeting our coverage objectives, but sort of helping a little bit, we would have to come up with an alternative where it might be two towers, where there's one um, that's in a location that's not quite uh, where we want to be, and it's still leaving a significant coverage gap, and so now we have to build a second tower somewhere else where there's some duplicative coverage, um, but now we're able to, to meet our coverage objectives. And that's why it's so important when we're working through these uh, siting issues to, to try to be as close to possible in the center and in a, a, a desirable spot within that coverage gap um, because the requirements on the company in order to maintain it, its FCC licenses and, and to be able to continue providing the necessary coverage to its customers, you, you don't just want to, you know, again, cover a portion of your gap and, and just Leave, leave the rest. You have to come up with a secondary solution for that second area, and that's where you come into a situation where you're having multiple towers to cover the same area, which we've had to do before. Um, but if we can have one tower covering a, covering the, the primary area, that's obviously uh, beneficial to all. Uh, 
in that fill is 828 girl. I've lived here for 26 years. I'm opposed to the project. I'm really sorry that people have medical issues and don't have coverage. But I do have a direct question for Verizon. And I'm wondering since they tell the communication company what programs they have, what help they offer to these patients who don't have web access they need, other than slapping up a big cell tower. Do they have any outreach? Can they spend any of their money to help those patients? Sure. And two, why can't you pay in these little plans that would connect the parts? You have enough money. Okay. All right. So I'll, I'll say on, on the first point, um, I'm not mm -hmm. sure other than providing the coverage what could, uh, I guess, address the issue of someone who has a medical condition and has an inability to make phone calls. Um, also, the site is... These sites run, you know, anywhere from a million dollars on. So, like I said, the company has no interest in throwing their money into infrastructure. If they could run their network without constructing one more antenna uh, or one more site or installing one more cable, of course they would do it. Why not? It's all upside. So, the, the fact that they are investing in this very expensive infrastructure to cover this very specific radius is it means that they're doing their job and, and what they can in order to benefit um, the local residents and you know folks that are that are coming through the area. So that that's the whole point of the site is to provide that benefit. It's, it's not for Verizon's benefit. It, it's for the, the benefit of the customers. Um, on, on the second point, again, it, it's not appropriate in the context of a site plan to require a landowner to give up a property right without consideration. So. If the property owner, and we can certainly raise that as a question that was asked, and if they're willing to entertain that, okay. Um, but from a legal perspective, that's completely separate and apart from this application. Yeah, understood. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah. that's something, though, that we, I think we could work toward trying to do. I thought that was a good idea from Mr. Harris. And, and I'm not sure we have that correspondence, but if, if you could make sure that that gets to the team so we could look at it more carefully and pass uh, it. Yeah, yeah, I have, I have <coughs> a copy of it. Great. Lori Anderson, Lori Anderson, um, Anderson Hill, Lori Anderson, Lori Anderson, Lori Anderson, Lori Anderson, one more question I would like to be uh, clarify is whether or not construction has already started on the site. Going to the board meeting, <coughs> there was a, there's a road built and there's um, a substantial amount of fill and um, earth moving going on. It appears to be um, the cell site. So I would like to have some clarification of whether the work has actually started on this. The other yeah, clarification I, believe, I, believe, I would I believe, like... I know what you're talking but I believe Josh and, and the town engineer did go out there. That's not supposed to have been happening. They have it. It's nothing to do with the cell tower. No, we're not doing any more counseling. No. Okay, thank you. The other question is, um, in referring to the fact that other uh, cell companies and possibly the fire company and any other um, community service type um, organization may be able to um, access this particular tower for um, for their benefit and what you know, what their um, their needs might be. My question is, if this is granted and this is part of what is planned, um, then what um, the citizens might find um, acceptable at this point with the cell tower or not, then are they we going to be faced with this ever-evolving tower? If, for instance, should another company, another organization um, uh, agree to or uh, get an agreement that they can access the use of this tower, then add another 20 feet, 30 feet, more lights, more additions. So could this uh, tower evolve from the tower that we're talking about tonight to a much larger, much more substantial, much more visible tower than what we're talking about this evening. Yep, and that, that's a great question. Um, and, and sorry if I wasn't clear on that. The, the fact that we would, from a legal or a real estate perspective, uh, 
you know, welcome the opportunity to consider co-locations on the tower does not take away the jurisdiction of the town, uh, which would have the authority to review any changes. So any, even a, you know, one inch <laughs> increase to the height over what was proposed, um, even the addition of any um, significant set of additional antennas, those applications all come before the town board and the planning board with the same exact process as this tower. Um, you know, generally if the alternative is a brand new tower or adding antennas to an existing tower, that's typically going to be desirable. Um, but just because the tower is there, it's not going to give us any sort of carte blanche to modify it and change it in any way we want. We will have the specific plan that's been proposed. It is what will be approved. That will be the, that will be the basis of our building permit. And uh, from that point on, there cannot be any uh, modifications or additions without coming back through the same entire process, which would require public involvement in the public hearing, et cetera. Okay, I guess, is that it? What Mr. I just, I hate to say it. I just for the folks who had a concern about coverage, cell phone coverage, is landline service no longer offered in Webster? Is that not an option for folks who claim they don't have good coverage? My understanding is landline coverage still is available in Tom Webster. Is that true? I believe so. There's still landline coverage, isn't there? As far as I know, but in America, people have choices. Yeah. And people want their cell phones. So choices. here we are. Landline's a choice for folks? Well, yeah, but, but wait a minute. Well, you have to go to the mic. You're not, I'm sorry. My, just my thought on it is uh, why would I want, if I'm paying for a cell phone <clears throat> and I use it for business, for this, for that, and everything else, why would I have to want to have to pay for uh, a landline in my house just because I don't have coverage in my little pocket. If you live there. Well, that's my question. That's, I'm asking you, would I want, would you want to do that? No, I wouldn't. I don't think you would do that. Tony, I think, I believe that there are some companies that offer both cell phone and landline. I think it was well, as as that. one, maybe, about uh, telephone, or excuse me, I'm dating myself. Uh, <laughs> Frontier. Yeah, if you want a cell phone, you have a cell phone. If you right. want landline, you get a landline. If you want both, you get both. Right. But because I don't have coverage in, right. in that area of Lake Road, doesn't, I don't want to be forced to have to pay for a landline to cover myself at home. Right. They're separate, completely separate services. Yeah, like there's Verizon, the phone company, that does landline work, yeah. which is different than Verizon Wireless. And just because you may have a you know Verizon landline that provides you a landline doesn't mean that you're somehow going to be able to get cell coverage without there being the appropriate communication. I, I just see these ads on TV for Spectrum, you know, and they run every five minutes of the whole day uh, where they offer something like that. Yeah, I think that's all That's all presuming that like, the coverage is there, right? Like you can buy Verizon phones and, and plans as well, but the coverage isn't available. Verizon is the Verizon is the incumbent landline provider in certain yeah. markets across the state as well. So we're one of those companies that, depending on the licensed area, we have both sides of the house. But um, that doesn't preclude users from you know, wanting to use their cell phones, regardless of whether it's inside the home or outside the home. But we're talking about an entire geographic area, and landline service to uh, pinpoint locations doesn't resolve that issue. So just to be clear, we're talking about a much larger area than just specific homes. Service area. Okay, anybody? No, Derek, any questions? I mean, we pretty much covered everything that we need to have at this point. Derek, Dave, all set. All right, I guess pretty much covers it. There's okay. no vote tonight for any of this. Okay, this great. This is strictly an informational meeting, yes. so the next one is preliminary and, you know, preliminary hearing on it. Great. Uh, Thank you for the opportunity. Yes. If anything specific comes up between now and then, please let us know and okay. we'll be prepared to address, but otherwise we'll report to you. Okay, thank you. Take care. Thank you. Thank you.